Father, this morning we ask that you accept our commitment, our consecration to follow you and to submit our lives to your will. Henceforth, Father, it's not going to be what we want, it will be what you want. Lord, I pray that for everyone here this morning, everyone will fall in love with the will of God for their lives. No one will detest the will of God. No one will despise the will of God. Everyone will have a fresh revelation of the will of God as the gateway to the rest of God. And the devil will no longer deprive us of the abundant life that Jesus had died to give us. I pray that it will be so with everyone here. Online on ground, the hand of God will rest upon us. That nothing in this wild world will interest us again outside the will of God. It is within the will of God that we are preserved. It is within the will of God that we are saved. It is within the will of God that we are secured. There is nothing that we need that is not provided for in the will of God. I ask that more than your servant can teach, the Holy Ghost will open our eyes. And everyone will be gripped with that compelling force of the Holy Ghost to submit to the will of God all the time. Thank you, Father. Lord, we ask that you will take, on, take us on in the service and let your name alone be glorified. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' name, we pray. Let me quickly round up what I have been taking in the last three months. We're talking about the lessons you must be learning under the anointing. I want every member of this church to take note of these lessons. Out of six of them, I've shared four with you. And I'm going to take the remaining two briefly this morning. The anointing is the power of God. I told you that the anointing enables the preaching of the good news to the poor. The anointing brings freedom. It breaks yoke. The anointing is the power of God among these people. The anointing releases the favor of God. The anointing replaces physical ashes with divine beauty. The anointing replaces mourning with the oil of joy. The anointing changes men and practically establishes men to the glory of God. The anointing connects the captives, the captives to freedom. The anointing secures the deliverance for the prisoners. The anointing provides comfort to the brokenhearted and those who mourn. The anointing replaces the spirit of heaviness with a garment of praise. The anointing powers and it facilitates the rebuilding of what the Bible calls ancient ruins. It brings restoration to long devastated places. Places and things that have been ruined for generations. The anointing brings total restoration. Brethren, as powerful as the anointing is, it won't work in your life until you begin to learn these lessons. When you come to church, you have come to connect to the anointing. Church is not a normal place. I've told you severally. Church is not a normal place. Church is a spiritual atmosphere. A place where the presence of God takes over. There are things that happen in church that cannot happen anywhere else. And I told you anytime you are coming, as we fellowship together, you must open your spirit and keep your focus. Church is a serious place. Many people have stayed long in church today, but the anointing is not working for them. 
there are things that happen sometimes and you wonder, why should that happen to that man? Most times, many people are not connecting to the anointing because they are not learning these lessons. You know God can see what man can see. How many of you agree with me? We can see your faces, but God sees your heart. There are people that you think they are very committed, but God knows they are not. There are, there are people that you think not, ah, they are the first to be considered when it comes to the benefit of the anointing, the anointing in the house, the anointing over this vision, that they will be the first to benefit from it. But it may not be so. How can you be under life and you still die? How can you be in the midst of plenty and you still suffer scarcity? How can you be prayed for from day to day, day in, day out? And yet, there are no evidences of God's power in your life. Most time I tell you, it's not because not something is wrong with your pastor. It's because something is wrong with you. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Amen. So these lessons are very important. I spoke about the lesson of proper estimation of the anointing. Number two, I spoke of the lessons of loyalty, the lessons of trust, and the lessons of submission. Number three, I spoke of the lessons of godly and humble response to anointed correction, anointed instruction, anointed counsel, and training. Your pastor is not just to preach to you alone. Part of the ministry of a pastor is to correct to instruct, to counsel, and train. Are you hearing me now? The anointing can work for you when you are rejecting anointed correction. When you are rejecting anointed instruction. Many people have walked into death because of rejection of anointed instruction. The anointing can work when you, have, when you do not have a humble response. And godly response to anointed counsel and training. I told you last month, it's not everything that prayer will do for you. There are some things that it is your response to instruction that will do it. Are you hearing me now? Are you hearing me? Prayer is a master key, but there are other keys. Prayer is a master key, but there are other keys. You can't be praying and be rejecting anointed correction and expect that God will answer your prayer. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Anointed correction, anointed instruction, anointed counsel, and training. From the years you have been coming to church, if the anointing will benefit you, this lesson is compulsory to learn. You will, must not be the person that they correct and then you frown throughout. If the pastor has the right to pray for you, he has the right to correct you. He has the anointing to correct you. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? You don't say amen to the prayer that cannot correct you and you accept it. If a man of God can't correct you and you accept it, when he pray for you, don't say amen. Because that prayer will not be answered. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying now? Is somebody hearing what I'm saying now? Very, very important. So today, let me take the remaining two. The lesson of faithfulness and diligence. The lesson of faithfulness and diligence. If you have stayed in church for 50 years and you are not learning this lesson, you will still not benefit from the anointing. God is not a man. God is not emotional. God is a God of principle. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? It's not a respecter of person, but it's a respecter of principle. It pains me when people stay in the church for years and there is no benefit of the anointing in their lives. This is part of what is causing it. The lesson of faithfulness and diligence. May you learn that lesson. I can't hear your amen. 
May you learn that lesson. Faithfulness and diligence. Faithfulness in attendance. Faithfulness in attendance. Faithfulness in attention. Faithfulness in attention. You know, many times the devil will fight you with attendance. And some people have not to overcome that battle. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Faithfulness in attendance. You are faithful in attendance. Some people come to church on Sunday. You won't see them again until next Sunday. Some people come to church once in a month. In fact, there are some people that when you see them, they come on special occasion. And then they come and say, let the anointing work for me. It doesn't work like that. Faithfulness. Somebody say faithfulness in attendance. Very, very important. Attendance. Say attendance. I've taught you here that there are three qualities of a member. You can't say somebody is a member of a church without three things. One, attendance, attention, and function. Say after me, attendance, attention, and function. A correct church member comes to church regularly. When a correct church member is in service, he gives full what? Attention. A correct member of the church who is part of what God is doing has a function, a responsibility. No part of your body is a decoration. Every part of your body functions. They are located by their functions. Your hand is not a decoration. Is it? Is it? What of your nose? Does it have its function? Is there any part of your body that doesn't do anything? That is just there? Talk to me. So every part of your body has what? Function. You can't be a member of the church without a function. A function is service that you render. So many people have not passed these this three tests. Attendance, attention, and function. So God is looking for faithfulness. Faithfulness in attendance. Faith, and you know, faithfulness in attendance. And attendance includes punctuality and regularity. That is a critical part of attendance. If we are about to share the grace and you just rush into the service, in all fairness, did you attend service? Answer me. If the service starts, let's say, by 9 o'clock in the morning and you are just working it by 11.30 as a bridegroom that is getting married, when they are counting the people that attended service that day, in all fairness, if you will not deceive yourself, do you think you should be counted? Talk to me. So, attendance is punctuality. Punctuality. Coming on time. Be punctual. That's faithfulness. And that gives you the benefit of the anointing. The second component of attendance is regularity. Not that you come once in a while. Not that you come once in a month. Regularity. That are, we have service on Sunday. You are there. Some people will not come to Sunday school. They will just come to what we call celebration service. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Your Sunday is not complete without Sunday school. Alright? Some people will come only on Sunday, but they won't come to Bible study. They won't come to prayer meetings. So, attendance is what? Punctuality and what? Regularity. Say after me. Attendance 
is punctuality and regularity. You know, a regular late comer to church is saying five things. A regular late comer to church is saying five things. You know, there are things we do not say with our mouth that we're actually saying with our attitude. God hears them. Are you with me? God hears the thing you are not saying with your mouth, but you are saying with your attitude. It's not only the mouth that we use to talk alone. That is what they call body language. <laughs> that is what you are saying with your attitude. So, somebody who is a regular late comer, who is a chronic late comer, is saying five things. Number one, he's saying that God is not important. He's saying that God is not what? Important. He said, I didn't say so. That's what your attitude is saying. If it's important, you will be punctual. That's what we are saying. Number two, he's saying that God should be the one waiting for me. Between you and God, who should be waiting? Huh? Who should be waiting? Is it God that should be waiting for you? Now, when we say service start by nine, how many of you know God is there before that time? How many of you know God is there before that time? You agree? Now, you now, God has been there by nine o'clock. You are just coming in by 11 time. So what are you saying? Be the one to wait for me. That's why many people don't benefit from the anointing. The joy is not that I've been in church for years. The joy is what did you become? What are you becoming? What is the anointing doing in your life? Number three. A chronic latecomer is saying that God's provision for that service or that meeting is not needed or it's not valuable. A chronic late comma is saying that the provision of I don't need it. Because every service has a divine provision. There are things that God comes to supply by his spirit in every service. God he didn't gather us to waste our time. He didn't gather us for fun. We are not here today because we want to look at the face of the pastor. Or that you want to greet people. We're here because God has a provision for us. A provision that money cannot buy. So if you are a chronic late comer, what you are saying is that what God has for that service is not, is not I don't need it. You say, but I didn't say it, but your attitude is saying so. I'm not talking of maybe once in a while because of some understandable reason, whatever, you come late. But I'm talking of chronic late comer. People that late coming has become their attitude before father. Such people don't benefit from the anointing. Because the provision of God in every service is going to respond to personal hunger. God doesn't give you what you are not hungry for. One of the ways to show your hunger for the things of God and for the provisions of God is to come punctually. If the governor says you should come to a place, a gift for you, will you be there on time? How many of you know there are some meetings that governor will attend? They will tell you the time that everybody must be what? Yes or no? Anybody that is not seated at the time stipulated when the governor is already there, what will happen to that person? They turn them back. I hope God is bigger than the governor. Did you hear what I said? I said I hope. <laughs> Do you know God is bigger than the governor? So, I'm just helping you this morning why many people don't benefit from the anointing. And number five, you are saying that God is the one that is in need of you. That you are not the one that is in need of God. 
when you come late perpetually, saying God is the one that is in need of me. And number five, you are saying that other things, other people, and other places are more important than the presence of God. That's what you are saying. Because if you want to go to your place of work, you are not likely to go there late. If you want to go and collect money from somebody and the person gave you time, you are not likely to go there late. So if you are always late to church and it has become your attitude, what you are saying is that other places are more important. Other things are more important than the presence of God. So faithfulness in attendance. Faithfulness in attendance. Then faithfulness in attention. When you are in church, keep your focus. Tell somebody, keep your focus. That's how to benefit from the anointing. Be sensitive. Don't be distracted. Keep your focus on the anointing. You know, that man at the beautiful gate was never distracted. The Bible says he was looking at Peter and John. How many of you remember? He concentrated on them. And he got the benefit of the anointing. That's why many people don't get the benefit. There are times God came to church, but most people don't know. Because he's not giving attention. He's distracted by other things. Oh, Newala song. Oh, Nini Dano. And then faithfulness in catching up with the divine and schedules in your local church. Faithfulness in catching up. There are divine moves. Catch up. 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 Okay? Catch up. The anointing will always expose your laziness, your bad attitudes, and your idiosyncrasies. I want you, when you get back home, I want you to read Psalm 84. Better read it from verse 1. Verse 1 down to verse 11. Amen? Are we still together? Let's go there. My spirit did not leave. Let's go there. Psalm 84. Psalm 84. It's always a pain in my heart when people come to church and there is nothing that happened in their life. And all the time, it's not because God is not able they are not faithful. They are, you must be learning the lesson of faithfulness. Faithfulness and diligence under the anointing. Psalm 84 verse 1. Our mebu at the tabernacles, O Lord of hosts, my soul longed, yea, even fainted for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Did you see hunger? Hello? Don't come to church as if they beg you to come. If you want to come, come. If you don't want to come, don't come. I'm only helping you because these are the reasons why many people are not benefiting from the anointing. Because I cannot explain why the anointing will be flowing and you still not get the benefit of it. Verse 3. Yea, the sparrow had found an house. And they swallow a nest for herself. Where she may lay her young. Even thy altars, O Lord of hosts. My King and my God. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. They will be still praising thee. Now look at verse uh, 7. They go from what? If this is not your testimony, something is wrong with you. In a church that has a candlestick in heaven. Every faithful member is supposed to be going from what? From strength to strength. From strength because of the impartation of grace, the impartation of the anointing. From strength to strength. You come on Sunday, there is a flow of strength. You come on Tuesday, Wednesday, there is a flow of strength. You come for prayer meeting, there is a flow of strength. And that flow will continue. 
and you will continue to be a beneficiary of that flow as long as you are faithful. You are getting the lesson of faithfulness and diligence. Don't let there be any area of your life that you have not exposed to God. Some people can keep secret with the devil until when it is too late to help them. Are you hearing me now? Some battles of our life will never be over until we open up. Faithfulness. Tell somebody faithfulness. That's a critical lesson that connects you to the benefit of the anointing. You must be going from strength to strength. Every one of them. Did the Bible say pastor alone? What did the Bible say? Every one of them in Zion. Before God. You know, every time you come to church, you didn't come to appear before pastor. Who did you come to appear before? You appear before God. And God is looking at your heart. He sees what the pastor does not see. Thank God your pastor is not the distributor of the anointing. Otherwise, he may be emotional about it. But God is the one. I pray that you will understand this truth. Look at verse 10 and 11. Verses 10. For a day in thy court is better than a thousand. You know the meaning of that? What the power of God can get done in your life in one day will be better than whatever can happen naturally in 1,000 years. You didn't hear that. Did you hear that? What the power of God can get done in your life when you are faithful and you connect to the benefit of the anointing in one day will be better than what can happen naturally in 1,000 years. That's why the Bible says a day in thy court is what? Is better than a thousand. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. You know, let's read verse 11 together. One, two, go. For the Lord God is a what? A son and shield. The Lord will do what? Will give grace and glory. No what? No good thing will he withhold from everybody. Mm -hmm. From everybody. What does the Bible say? From them that walk uprightly. Walking uprightly is faithfulness. Faithfulness. That's why I say the lesson of faithfulness and diligence must be learned every day if you are going to benefit from the anointing. These are the things that always cause it. Grace and glory in our lives are the proof of the anointing. And it is the gift of God. The Bible says the Lord will give grace and what? And glory. Amen. Are you with me this morning? Very, very, very important. Let me take the final lesson as we pray. The lesson of proper and consistent connection to the anointing. The lesson of proper and consistent connection to the anointing. There are two things are said there. Proper connection to the anointing. Consistent connection to the anointing. Some people do not connect to the anointing properly. So even if they spend 100 years in the church, nothing is going to happen in their life. Because they are not properly connected to the anointing. It will be a waste of time for you to be coming every day, every time, every time that you say, you're always coming, you're always there, you're always there. And you are not connected to the benefit of the anointing. Because you are not properly connected. Some people have been properly connected, but at a point in their life, they disconnected. They are not consistent. So, proper and consistent connection to the anointing. 
You must learn that lesson. It's a lesson that you must be learning under the anointing. I'm praying that you will not pray amiss. You will not waste your time in church. Beyond prayer, this is the lesson we must be learning. This is the lesson we must be learning. The lesson of proper and consistent connection to the anointing. How do you connect to the anointing? Write down these five things. Number one, your genuine salvation experience is your proper connection to the anointing. Your genuine what? Salvation experience. If you have been coming to church, you are not born again. You will not be a partaker of the spiritual things that is happening. So, who is losing? Is he your pastor? Anybody that's coming to church, especially a church like this, and with all that we are saying, you have not given your life to Jesus. Ah, there is no connection to the anointing. And so anytime the devil the devil have his way. So the first way to connect to the anointing properly is genuine salvation experience. Say after me, genuine genuine salvation experience. Everything that God has to give as a covenant for us in this house, if you are not born again, it does not concern you. It does not concern you. So the first way to connect is your genuine salvation. Don't pretend. Get born again. Number two, obedience. Obedience. Many people have run into their debt because of lack of obedience. Many people are poor. Many people are oppressed. And they remain like that. Not because God can't do something about them. But because they lack obedience. Obedience is your strong connection to the anointing. The Bible says, if ye be willing and what? And obedient, ye shall what? Ye shall eat the fruit of the land. Without obedience, you, you can't connect to the anointing. If by the sovereign act of God, the anointing breaks your yoke, if you are not learning the learning of obedience, it is a matter of time. You will be entangled again with that yoke. This time around, it will be very terrible. Has God changed? He has not changed. He's the same. Obedience. Let obedience become your nature. Let obedience become your nature. That is how to connect to the anointing. There is no connection to the anointing until obedience is in place. Obedience to God, obedience to the word of God, obedience to the Holy Ghost, obedience to instructions. Obedience to instruction. It's for your good. It's for your benefit. Is for your good, is for your benefit. Number three, you connect by service. That's how to connect to the anointing. By what? By service. Practical involvement in what the Lord is doing. Your service is a critical seed that you must deposit in the fertile soil of the kingdom. If you are a member of this church, what are you doing here? What are you what service are you rendering? What's your contribution? Did you hear what I say? What's your what? Contribution. Some people say Shadu and Shami was in church. Who told you? Are you hearing me now? What's your contribution? What are you practically doing? What are you doing under what God is doing here? Your service. Is a seed that connects you to the anointing. If you stay aloof, you are not likely to benefit from the anointing. Especially those of you that have been a member for long. You just stay aloof. 
what they are doing doesn't concern you. Before they share the grace, you, are, you have escaped. You, do, you are just a, an anonymous member. Many things that God will distribute him, you won't partake. Did you hear what I say? Very, very important. Your sonship. That's number four. Your sonship. That's how you connect to the anointing. And say, let the God of my father, ah, the God of this, the God, let him work for me. This is how it works. So. This, is how it works. this is how it works. Are you hearing me now? This is how it works. Sonship. Be a son of God. Be a son of the kingdom. Be a son of this house. When we see sons of this house, that they, you can know them. Be a son of this calling. Be a son of the anointing. We call them the sons of oil. Their life is a reflection of the calling. Their life is a reflection of the words of God. Their life does not contradict the word from the pulpit. Are you hearing me now? And finally, your seed. Now, seed is not just money. Because every time we talk of seed, the first thing people think is that they are looking for money. Oh yes, money is good. And money is useful in the kingdom. Yes or no. But money is not the only seed. So seed of love. So seed of service. So seed of your so seed of so seed and then so seed of money too. Because there are times that money is required. And they call you so and so so and so and so so and so. Let's Let's do this. Let's do that. Don't be the one that will grumble and complain. You know, sometimes when, when there is a need in the house of God and uh, people are expected to contribute and meet that need, I find it funny when people grumble. They say, ah, how can they say we should contribute money in the house of God? My question is, don't you spend money in your own house? Answer me. How many of us spend money every day? Hello? Of course, you know, for those of us who are members, it is not a problem to us. We spend for God with joy. Your seed is a connection. It may, it may be money, it may be time. Whatever you have that you can give is a seed. It may be time, maybe your treasure, maybe your service, maybe your skill. I mean, it may be your expertise and it may be money. It's a seed. If you do it with sincerity to God, you are connected to the anointing. There are people that are outside Nigeria that are likely to get the benefit of the anointing better than somebody that is in Nigeria and that is coming physically every day. It's all about positioning. I'm praying that you will never forget this. This is how you sow seed. Whatever is the seed, this is how we sow it to connect to the anointing. Number one, sow generously. Sow generously. If it is the seed of time, sow it generously. If it is the seed of your expertise, sow it generously. If it is the seed of your skill, sow it generously. If it is the seed of money, sow it generously. The Bible says God loves a cheerful word giver. It's better to sow generously. It's better not to sow at all than not to sow generously. Number two, sow obediently. The seed of a rebellious person is an abomination to God. Sow obediently. Don't sow in disobedience. Don't sow seed in rebellion. Even if you give us one billion dollar, if you rebel against the, the Lord, you have wasted that seed. It doesn't get any benefit. So in obedience. Number three, so willfully. Willfully. Not that, well, if we don't do it now, we don't know what will happen. So willfully. Let it be from your will. Are you hearing me now? Number next, so unceasingly. 
so unceasingly. It's not that you sow in January, you don't sow again until December. So, you know there are times you have seed of money, sow it. There are times it is seed of time, sow it. There are times it is seed of, of trust, sow it. There are times it is seed of your expertise, sow it. There is nobody that can say, I have no seed. All of us have seed per time. You must be able to recognize the seed you have per time. To be seedless is to be futureless. May you not be futureless. So people say, I don't have money. Time. That season of your life, time is your seed. Sow it generously to the Lord. I don't have money, but you have expertise. Oh yes, get it done. There is something of the kingdom that needs your expertise. That's your contribution. And it connects you to the anointing. If you do it properly. So it's not every time you don't have money. You say, I don't have seed. No. I hope you got that. I hope you got that. Very, very important. Seed of words. Seed of attitude. And so on and so forth. So strategically. That's the last one. So strategically. You know. I want you to listen to, I've done three teachings now on the lessons you must be learning under the anointing. The first one I did, one and two. The second one I did, point three and four. Today now is the third one. I'm doing point five and six. Now, I will tell them to put everything with one link. I want you to listen to it again and again and again and again and again. I did those teachings because the Holy Ghost does not want you to come in vain. Your membership must connect you to the anointing. You can't be a member of a church like this and your life does not change. You cannot be exposing yourself to the grace of God every time. In teaching, in prayer, in fellowship and your life is not moving from grace to grace, from strength to strength. These are the lessons that you must learn. And we must learn it not just once, we must learn it continually. Are you blessed this morning? Let's rise up on our feet. I want you to talk to the Lord. Lord, I choose to be faithful. Faithful and diligent. You didn't come to serve me. You have come to meet God. What will make God look in your direction are the things the Holy Spirit has explained to us. Don't say, Lord, give me the grace. He has given you the grace. I want you to pray with responsibility. Lord, I choose to be faithful. I choose to be diligent. Let that be the language of your prayer. I shall be faithful in attendance. I shall be faithful in attention. I choose to be faithful and diligent. Under this anointing, let it be your choice. Open your mouth and begin to pray. I choose to be faithful. I choose diligent. I choose to connect to the anointing properly. And I connect to the anointing consistently. I'll connect properly. I'll connect consistently. Open your mouth and pray. Lord, it's my choice. Whatever has been separating me from the anointing, I take authority over them this morning. I bring my attitude under the control of the Holy Ghost. I bring my attitude under the control of the Holy Spirit. Oh Lord, help me. It's my choice to serve you, to love you, and to be a beneficiary of the anointing. The devil will no longer exert upon me. The devil will no longer cheat me. I will not give the devil any chance to cheat me. I will go from strength to strength. As I come to Zion. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus name we pray. Father we are grateful this morning. For this first shot that you gave us. Thank you Lord for the opening of eyes. And the revelation of the truth. I pray that everyone will begin to apply these lessons. Daily and continually. To always be a constant beneficiary of the anointing. Thank you Father. We give you praise, we give you glory. In Jesus' name, we pray.